Hello, here's a lesson that you can use with your students if you're an Algebra 1 teacher and you teach uh, proportions. I plan on showing you how you can use photographs to convey the idea of proportions for your students and then give them an opportunity to take their own pictures and set up their own proportions to solve. Okay, when I first started teaching the idea of proportions for my, to my students, uh, that's when the Austin Powers movie came out uh, where it talked about uh, Dr. Evil having a mini-me. And remember in the movie they say that mini-me is exactly like Dr. E Evil except he's exactly one-eighth the size. And so, of course, being a math person, I thought, hey, is that, is that true? Is that a true uh, proportion, a true ratio? And again, a ratio compares two items. So we're basically comparing mini-me's height to Dr. Evil's height. And a proportion is just two ratios set equal to each other. So I would introduce this to students, and we would set up, and we'd talk about ratios, we'd talk about proportions, and we would set this up and talk about how we can solve this particular proportion. And to solve proportions, you can cross multiply. Okay, so to find mini me's real height, if, and again, I would always say that. Uh, Dr. Evil was six foot, but you could use different numbers. You can say, well, what if he's five foot, six inches, you know, so you can change that number. But based on the fact of using six feet, we find out that he would be three-fourths of a foot or nine inches, which would be impossible. But then I show students exactly what nine inches is in real life, and we get a kick out of if there was actually someone that small. So again, that was my tie-in to always do, you know, setting up proportions. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show the students is a real-life picture. And this is a picture of a tree outside my house, and I have my wife standing next to the tree. And again, we would talk about, you know, they have to be on the same plane to get a, an estimate of the, the tree's height. So we tried to line up my wife directly next to the tree and gave them conditions, you know, gave them enough information to be able to then set up the proportion to be able to solve and estimate the height of the, the tree in feet. And uh, again, there's another little tie-in, uh, showing them real pictures, and then eventually allow them to go out and take their own pictures uh, with given a known height. So they would use an object or a person where they know the height and compare it to an unknown. Okay, here I, I had the work, and can we we would discuss that there's more than one way to be able to set up a proper ratio for for this particular example. Uh, and again, it's important for the students to understand that they should write a verbal model of the ratio of what's actually being compared, and when they set up their proportion. So in this case. You know, I have the, the size of the picture, the actual picture, and, and again, I use my computer screen, and I use the roller within the Promethean software, and again, we would talk about, you know, the, the scale and make sure that you're using a proper scale, but uh, here I have the picture size and the real life size, and yes, my wife is six feet tall, but uh, it actually works out, the numbers work out pretty nicely, and once we set up the proportion, it's relatively easy to be able to then solve. So given these conditions, we estimate that the, the tree is about 27 feet in front of our house. Here's another example uh, that just to give students some ideas then, because I want them to then go out and come up with their own photos and set up their own problems to present. So this example here, I have my daughter standing on the street in front of our basketball pole, and I'm going to then be asking the height from the street to the top of the basketball, the backboard. And again, I give enough information. We have enough information here to be able to solve for the unknown. And then the next slide is going to show the work. And again, there's more than one way to set up the problem to be able to find the unknown. But again, I'm using the photo size of the photograph to the actual size. And we're making that comparison. And again, solving by cross multiplying is relatively easy. Uh, again, students would have that prior knowledge to be able to solve a one-step equation. 
Here's one more example. Uh, in this example, I have a toy car sitting on top of a real car, and I know the length of the toy car, and we can then solve to figure out the length of the real car, given these conditions. So again, I have it set up. Given enough information, the students then should be able to set up this proportion uh, themselves, but then we would go over the, the work. Again, here it is. Again, you can have similar problems to show your students, and then the main goal then is to have your students be able to set up their own problem. And again, you can talk about units and dimensional analysis where they have to convert and understand which unit, a measurement that uh, the question uh, asks for. So in this case, I asked for, I want to know the length of the car in feet. And uh, again, we are all, and again, I would talk about, you know, this is just an estimate. In real life, uh, the Hyundai Sonata is around 180, I think 189 inches in length. But just because my perspective may have been off a little bit, that's enough to, to throw off this particular example. But again, it still is a nice way to be able to have them work with proportions, set up, and do estimates. You know, this is a great way to be able to estimate uh, length of unknowns in the real world. Okay, and finally, I'm going to talk, definitely talk to your students about uh, being able to increase the size of a picture on their computers without distorting the picture. The, again, there's uh, ways to be able to increase and decrease a picture and maintain the aspect ratio. So I'd definitely show them. And also, you know, you can be pretty creative, you know, with some photographs. And I have this site that, again, would not work for our proportion problems because you know our perspective is off but I would definitely show them this site where it gives examples where the perspective is off so like again that that image we cannot set up a proportion based on the size of its hand and the size of the ta tower because we're, they're not on the same plane so but you know maybe give the students an opportunity to come up and be creative with you know maybe one of their examples they could be way off with the proportion and stuff like that so but I thought this site was really cool as far as some of the techniques that they use to be able to create some cool photos. And again, in this case, since we're not on the same plane, uh, our way of solving proportions to find the unknown wouldn't work. So again, it would be a good idea to be able to point that out and then perhaps, again, accept the one picture where they're not on the same plane. And then, again, just the have you, give your students an opportunity to be creative okay so again I thought that was pretty pretty cool and a neat little discussion you know your students would definitely uh, you know be up for the challenge to maybe have one picture where they would be off so again turn this over then to your students to be able to create their own problems you know so what I would recommend uh, have students do at least five pictures and you know have enough information for for you to be able to set up a proportion so I would require my students to do five pictures with a solution and again it would have to be a reasonable solution and if they wanted to they can have one picture where it is off it's based on the perspective and you can probably you should be able to pick it out right away that hey this particular photograph is not made to scale and again you can create your own rubric I, I have a rubric that uh, I would make this project worth 35 points so hopefully that's that gives you some ideas of what you can do with your students thank you